on April 30th, 1975, began the pullout of Vietnam, ending U.S. involvement in Vietnam. At 4.03 a.m. on April 30th, two U.S. Marines were killed on a rocket attack at Saigon's Tassanut Airport. They were the last Americans killed in Vietnam. At dawn, the remaining Marines that were the embassy security force were airlifted from the U.S. Embassy with the flag from the U.S. Embassy, thus ending our involvement in Vietnam and also our diplomatic ties to Vietnam. If you were alive back then, you might recall that our soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen that returned from that war were not treated as valiantly as they are today. They were spat upon, called baby killers. There were instances across the nation where uh, ROTC programs were bombed on college campuses. Uh, it was just a, a dark time in our history. That also marked the first time in 1968 where the media actually took a huge presence in the uh, overall outcome of that war. That being said, Midwest City for the last nine years has hosted a uh, Veterans Day Memorial or Veterans Day Parade. With our con uh, connection with Tinker Air Force Base, it just seems appropriate that we continue this tradition. But this year is special. Uh, we would like to welcome home the Vietnam veterans with the parade that they never got. So I'm going to read this resolution to you. A resolution proclaiming that the Midwest Sea Veterans Day Parade be dedicated to all Vietnam veterans providing them with a long overdue welcome home. Whereas the city of Midwest City was established as a sports facility for the U.S. military, and whereas the city of Midwest City recognizes the importance of those who have served our nation, and whereas 500,000 troops served in Vietnam with 58,000 giving their lives, whereas the city of Midwest City recognizes the fact that veterans of the Vietnam War were not welcomed home in a manner that was commensurate to their sacrifice. And whereas the city of Midwest City will dedicate the Midwest City Veterans Day Parade to those who have served in Vietnam and surrounding countries. Whereas the city of Midwest City will ask all citizens of this community to come together and offer those deserving vet Vietnam veterans in Oklahoma their welcome home. Whereas the city of Midwest City will dedicate the 2020 Veterans Day Parade to the proud Americans who served during the Vietnam conflict. And I would ask the council indulgence in uh, entertaining a motion and approving this resolution. Motion to approve. <clears throat> I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor indicate saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Thank you very much and thank you for your indulgence, you. ladies and gentlemen. Consent agenda done, and we move into our discussion items. Mr. Lyons, discussion item number one. Discussion item number one, PC 2028, public hearing, discussion, and consideration of an ordinance to redistrict from A1 agriculture to R6 single family detached residential for the property described as a part of the northeast quarter of Section 8, Township 11 North, Range 1 West, and addressed as part of 2101 South Anderson Road. Mr. Harless. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. Okay. Is that better? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, this is a request to uh, rezone the property from A1 Agriculture to R6 Single Family Detached Residential. A circular portion of this property was rezoned to A1 with a special use permit to allow the operation of an oil and gas well in 1985. The oil and gas well is no longer in operation. However, the zoning remained unchanged since that time. The applicant has purchased the property and is applying to rezone the circular A1 portion to R6, single family detached residential, so that the zoning is consistent with the entire parcel. At this time, the applic uh, applicant has 
not submitted a sketch plat or had a free application meeting to subdivide, the, uh, subdivide and develop the property, uh, Planning Commission uh, recommended approval. I'm glad to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, th so this is, if, if, I, if I get you right, and it, it's, I guess you want to talk, go ahead first. Go ahead. No, please go ahead. Go, it's your, your uh, yeah, so Mason Schwartz, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicant. <coughs> I'm uh, not going to repeat too much of what the gentleman said. We, we did go to planning commission on this. It is just really a, a cleanup rezoning application. The rest of the 200 continuous acres of a property that my client owns and recently, recently purchased uh, is the single family zoning. There's this weird anomaly of zoning, uh, this circular piece in the middle that is still A1 from uh, back in 1985 when they, they had a well. So. Uh, it's really nothing more than bringing this circular piece into compliance with the zoning of the rest of the parcel. Um, and that's what, what we ask this council to approve today. The, the question I have is there's a statement in the, the report. It talks about a request to rezone the property to a PUD or PUD in 2017. And, and that was denied. Uh, is, is, what is the issue with the property that they tried to do something couple of years ago and it was turned down or is it going to be an issue now um, I think the uh, at that time when uh, the applicant came forward um, or the applicant at, at the time for that piece of property came forward with that it did not meet the subdivision regulation necessarily um, or you know uh, we're really emphasizing quality neighborhoods and uh, uh, a, a variety of, of lot sizes and home sizes and um, it was a uh, Develop the property at uh, 600 or 6,000 square foot lots within that area, and so the, the, the zoning did not permit them to do that. So I, they changed their mind, and that's what, you know ultimately I think that's why they're coming back to rezone this, just it's for future development. So at that time, we were addressing the subdivision subdivision regulations and kind of expect the same quality proposal um, that that, that uh, the comp plan call, calls for. And, and if I could just reading back through all that, so that 2017. PUD application that was previous owner it wasn't us wasn't our client um, and that was as I understand it and correct me if I'm wrong that was a bigger piece of that was actually seeking to be rezoned through PUD uh, incorporating some of what's outside of what's here today and so that PUD was trying to take it from R1 regulations and switch it to the PUD regulations which would have varied things like setbacks uh, lot coverage etc um, that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to keep it R1 um, and just keep this piece in accordance with the rest of the R1. And so then at the time of development, we'll have to meet all of the R1 regs um, that the rest of our client, my client's property has to meet as well. So that, that case was really trying to uh, take it out of the R1 regs. We're trying to bring this into the R1 regs. And, and I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but uh, for those of you all that aren't on the ordinance review committee, we are going to go outside for Correct me if I'm wrong. A contractor to look at our subdivision. Uh, one, one yes, one. yes, that's correct, Councilman Byrne. We're going to hire a consultant to help us look at revisions on the subdivision regulations, specifically as it relates to um, improvements and and uh, I'm losing the word, Billy. Um, wa any type of yeah. waivers. Well. And, and it'll, it'll, at that, at that, and that's correct. So no, this is, I mean, PUD being a, a mechanism for zoning, this is the zoning phase as the plan is right now. The next phase at some point in the future would be um, development, and if that involves subdivisions, we'll of course have to meet whatever subdivision regulations are in time. And, in and the reason I bring it up is because that's a big piece of property, and you guys are going to spend a significant amount of money to develop that, I'm assuming. So I would not want you to go spend a lot of money and then figure out that were yeah. the subdivision regulations are in the process they haven't been changed yet but i encourage you before you get too far into it get with mr harless and his staff because the if you've been following the the way this has been going lately and it's not that we're trying to discourage development we're trying to make sure that we get 
quality development, which is in your benefit, would be the benefit for you and your client and anybody else that wants to build here. So some of that will more than likely change. I just don't want you spending a lot of money and then a couple months down the road, nobody said anything to me. I, and we very much appreciate that. So that's why I'm, because I'm on that committee and I know I kind of got a feeling where it's going and I want you to know up front because you're the first one that we've heard since we had our meeting and I wanted you to know that uh, we don't want you spending a lot of money and then figuring out that, oh, I got to do it a little different. Yeah, and, and we're referring to waivers. The impact fees on the waivers is what we're going to be working on in the subdivision regulations. Sure. So. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. Uh, other than applicant, does anyone have anything to add to this discussion? Hearing none, then the chair and entertain a motion. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, any of you saying aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. It, it, it passed. Thank you, guys. You bet. Thank you. So. Okay, Mr. Lund's discussion hey, item number two. I'm sorry? We, we think that we'll eliminate some of the feedback. It's, it's really bad uh, coming over YouTube, but if you'll only turn your microphone on when you're speaking, if you're not speaking, leave your mic off. The more of them we have hot, the more likely we are to have the feedback. So, okay. it will make a very bad noise. Do not do that, please. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Vaughn. Item two. Item two. Okay. Discussion item number two, PC 2033. Public the hearing with discussion, consideration, approval of a resolution for a special use permit to allow the use of wind energy conversion system of a wind energy conversion system in C3 community commercial and HOS hospital district for the property described as part of the southwest quarter section 9 township 11 north range 2 west located at 6201 Tinker Diagonal. Mr. Harless. Thank you Mr. Lyon. Um, <clears throat> the applicant uh, uh, Roseday College is, uh, is requesting to install a wind energy conservation system on part of the parcel addressed as 6201 Tinker Diagonal. Uh, the height of the <coughs> structure is 27 feet. Um, it should be noted the area request is not within the ATZ or the accident potential zone uh, for Tinker uh, as identified in the airport zoning ordinance. Um, this is a, 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 a learning mechanism that for, for some of the students there The applicant is in the audience. Uh, would you guys like to come down and address council? Yes, sir. Uh, my, my name is Wayne Jones. I'm the Dean of the Engineering and Science Division at Rose State College, and this is Laura Bernhardt, who has been uh, also working the project. What we are attempting to do, what we'd like to do, is to install a 27-foot um, pole, basically, and at the top of it, we would install a small wind turbine. Uh, the blades on the wind turbine are about 21 inches each. There's three blades, and then the, the body of the wind turbine itself is just 28 inches. And what we would do is to connect um, some instrumentation to that and use that as measurements in some of our classes. So we're trying to move more towards sustainable uh, energy type classes in our environmental science program. So this would provide us with a capability to do that. And we've, we've looked at uh, kind of the job market out there, and we think that's a pretty fertile area for us to venture into as far as uh, future jobs in energy. So this would be an educational tool, basically, for our students. Is it, how's the noise on that? Uh, it's virtually noiseless. It's just a real small turbine that would just be turning with the wind. Yeah. So not like the big ones that out? No, no, okay. no. That, I think it's about the body Smaller. of it's about this big, okay. about 28 inches long, and the blades are 21 inches. And we okay. would have some instrumentation that would be attached to that to measure, uh, you know, some of the electrical current that's coming from that, and use that as a teaching tool in our classes. This is a public hearing. Does anyone in the audience have anything to offer other than the applicant? 
Seeing none or hearing none, uh, Chair, to entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate for saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Thanks for being here, y'all, and okay. you got your wind turbine. All right. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. We'll move into item three of the discussion agenda. Mr. Lyon. PC 2034, discussion and consideration of approval of the proposed final plat of Tuscany Ridge Section 2, described as a part of the northwest quarter of Section 9, Township 11 North, Range 1 West of the Indian Meridian, Midwest City, Oklahoma. Mr. Harless. Thanks again, Mr. Lyon. Um, this item is a request approval of the final plat for Tuscany Ridge Section 2. The preliminary plat was approved in May of 2019 plat subdivides uh, existing lot in the original Tuscany Ridge addition from one lot into two lots and creates two additional lots um, to create a total of 19.8 acres of uh, additional lots there or total lots. Uh, the proposed lots exceed the minimum lot size in the R6 single family residential district. Planning Commission and uh, staff recommend approval since it meets all the minimum requirements and subsequent will be helpful. Be glad to answer any questions. Now, does this get into any of the issues that we've been talking about? It, it's basically a lot split, correct? Um, it is a, it's a full-on flat, and they did uh, 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 put the water lines and the uh, road frontage that they, the minimum water line and minimum road frontage that they needed for uh, fire protection, and then also road frontage, as you see from the, uh, the, 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 uh, the flat up there. Um, I forget how long the road is, uh, a couple hundred feet. Um, it does meet all those minimum requirements. They do not, they do not request any waivers. Uh, Thank you. All the requirements. So any questions or any further discussion on this? Chair, to entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carried. Yeah. We'll move into uh, discussion item number four. PC 2035, discussion and consideration approval of the animal shelter final plat for the properties described as a part of the southwest quarter of section 35, township 12 north, range 2 west, addressed as 8485 East Reno, 2901 Woodside Drive, and 2905 Woodside Drive. Mr. Harless. <coughs> Final plat, it's uh, the five acres is uh, being requested in order to combine the three existing lots into the one lot for development of Midwest City Animal Shelter. A zoning amendment was, uh, amendment was approved in September of 2019 to allow for the use of an animal shelter. Uh, all required and public improvements were are currently in place and available to the site. Uh, we're discussing the sidewalk, sidewalk along Woodside Drive and that was being installed at the time of, uh, of, the, of the construction of the animal shelter. Um, just a, a brief update on that. Um, be going out to bid on that um, uh, by the end of the month, if not the next week or so. So, doing the final reviews on that and uh, have it out on the street and see what the numbers come in like. Be glad to answer any questions. I think everybody's familiar with this. Any discussion or further questions? Move Chair, to approve. Second. Got a, got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. We'll be breaking dirt pretty quick, huh? That's awesome. Uh, item number five. Item number five, discussion item PC 2036, discussion and consideration approval of the preliminary plat of the Soldier Creek Industrial Park. Skip, described as a part of the northeast quarter of section 27, township 12 north, range 2 west, located at 7900 northeast 23rd. Billy. Final plat for Soldier Creek Industrial Park Skip was approved in June of 2018. Since that time, the Economic Development Director has had uh, many inquiries about the potential business wanting to locate within the park. However, due to the zoning regulations governing the site and the lot configuration, the park was not uh, necessarily uh, move in ready uh, for many potential um, interests. Uh, community Development Staff and the Economic Development Director have worked on a revised plan that will allow more flexibility within uh, regard to zoning uh, and 
available lots in an effort to spur development to gain skills. Uh, planning Commission needs staff to recommend approval to that next request. Any questions or comments? Good comment. Any further discussion? Chair to entertain a motion. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Uh, next item. Discussion item number six discussion and consideration of accepting a report regarding the pilot study for indirect potable reuse IPR by the city of Norman. Attached in your agenda is a report from Councilman Byrne, who is a member of that study committee, along with our public works director, Paul Streets, and citizen Steve Carano. We, uh, we put this on the docket more of a, as an educational piece for everybody on the council, because uh, here, probably in the next couple of weeks, you're going to start seeing some press coverage on this because uh, as, you, as you all know, the city of Norman asked us early last spring to become involved in a pilot study on indirect potable water usage. And, and that is like Rose State with the turbine, that is the way of the future on water. Uh, there's, it's, Oklahoma does not have any municipalities that use this right now. The closest one we have is Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, Norman is looking at, uh, with us and then with city and Dell city of having a pilot program that's going to last a couple years uh, if you remember we made no commitment to them that we'll do this the only commitment that we've made to them is that we'll go along with the study and by having a, mem a member of the council our public works director and a citizen who actually is a professor at rose state on on the review committee we're going to get to see that process up close and personal uh, Norman was awarded a, a significant grant a week or two ago of over $700,000 to put, put towards this project. We have not had to put anything other than our time in it so far. Uh, the one thing that they're waiting on, and they're supposed to have got it sometime this week, they were hoping to even have it by today, is a permit from DEQ, because without that permit, they can't have this pilot program. We've met four times. We've took tours of their facility at the Thunderbird. We've taken a tour of the facility at the, the Axel Water for, or the treatment plant in Norman. They've come up here and look at what we have here uh, in, in one additional one. Uh, there's, there's a lot of talk out there about this is water from the toilet. We're going to be drinking water from, uh, from the bathroom. This is not what this is. This is significantly treated water. But like I said, we have not committed to this program yet. But in the like I said, in the very near future, this is going to probably start getting some press. So we wanted to make sure that everybody in the council and the citizens knew we haven't committed to this. The only thing we've committed to is the pilot program. In uh, Mr. Street, have I left anything out that you? In, in the, like I said, there's there is a lot of rumors, and you know you can't let the facts get in the way of a good story. So and that's part of the problem or part of the issues that we're going to have to deal with if we ever start to go down this road is educating the public so what i encourage you all to do is if you have any questions if you see it and i encourage the public if you have questions to ask because i'm not a water guy but we have people in the city that are uh, but i it, trust me it's not going to happen overnight and it's going to be a slow methodical process and we just want everybody to realize we haven't jumped off into the water yet so there, there is a process for this in uh, we're, it's going very slow, which is good. Did I? Thank you. Yeah, it's Paul, a good report.
And we've, in, uh, like I said, I'm not a water guy, but what I've seen so far and what I've read is that uh, this is being done across the world and it's being done across the country. And we were the only, or Norman was the only person or only city that put in for this grant from the federal government was the only one outside the state of California who is in drought stages that got any federal money. So this will keep, if we were to go to this, and I'm just hypothetical, I'm not saying we are, but if we were to go to this and it works out and they can prove this water safe, this will basically assure us that we'll never go without water in the middle of the city. Um, Great. Contaminants of emerging concern. Yes, okay. that's and that's not and that's one big thing. But to be honest with you, another big thing is runoff from uh, people, not just the pharmaceutical, but from farmlands. And Paula, it, I would much rather you because, but yes, they are. In 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 one other thing, other thing I need to mention is that the University of Oklahoma is also involved in this too. There's a graduate student down there who's doing uh, a study on the educational piece, which trust me, we're gonna take advantage of that because if she can come up with a program that identifies in uh, something we can roll out, there's no sense in reinventing the wheel, even if it is from OU, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Let me clarify when we talk, OSU. <laughs> we talk about um, the, the use of the um, indirect potable reuse water is not going directly into the drinking system. It actually would be merged into the lake and, and create a firm yield for the lake for output. And the study will determine what kind of impact it has on the biology of the lake. Yeah, if I may, obviously, thank you, Councilman Byrne, for taking the time to communicate that he's been an incredible asset on the uh, IPR committee. And so, Steve, so we're grateful to have him. Um, what I'll tell you is this, this doesn't make any commitment on our part. This is important for us because the technology in Oklahoma as of yet has not really been proven. This gives us an opportunity to evaluate what the benefits are, what the risks are, and ultimately if it, if it number one, isn't safe, it's not going to happen. It'll never get off the ground. Uh, there are hurdles regarding the contaminants emerging, of emergency concern that we have to be able to get over before we'll ever approve it or the state will ever approve it. Um, not only that, but then you've also got to deal with some technology and the cost associated with this. This is something that, that frankly is a little bit, it's, it's ground that's been, un, it's not been plowed yet. We were on the leading edge in the state of Oklahoma in terms of developing some of those technologies. There are some other committees at the state level to speak to your concerns, uh, Councilman Reed, uh, that are right now considering what kind of limits they want to set for pharmaceuticals and, and it's various subjugates. You know, you've got the parent material, which may be anything from a, from um, a hormone uh, uh, to, to uh, endocrine disruptors, and those have various chemicals or constituents they break out into, which is part of your concern, part of what Bill Janicek, I don't know if you remember his concerns. The reality is those things are being studied and better and better information comes to light every day. Um, and, and for us to address those issues, the state is also concerned. Part of the reason they haven't issued that permit is because they've got some things internally they were trying to address and make sure they had the right people in the right seats on the bus to, to address those concerns and establish appropriate regulation for it. So um, slowly but surely we're getting there. The good news for us is if we make these steps, we take these steps um, with our eyes open and as a participant, there's great value for the city of Midwest City because in the future, if we ever choose to try to pipe our water to another location, whether it's an industry on 23rd Street or anywhere else, guess what? We're gonna have to deal with the same regulations, the same requirements, the same technological issues, um, the same financial issues. So, so to be honest, this is a great opportunity for us. Um, but, but like Pat said, it's important to remember this doesn't undo anything that we've we've done so far in terms of the decisions of the council of the city, but it does give us the opportunity to participate. Does that and help? one thing I would ask that we keep keep eye on also is the change in allocations, uh, who gets what, and that was also a concern when we did the pharmaceuticals, then changes of allocations of uh, the amount of water that uh, we can take out, Norman can take out. And, and uh, it's not a net gain issue at all, no. correct? Correct. 
I'd say that, that that's a little bit too complex to try to get into, but I would tell you that I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention Vaughn and I had an opportunity to speak briefly about it. He mentioned it. The lake, in, in, in this is kind of hard for most people. They don't understand. They think, well, it's a pretty clean lake, right? There's not much of a problem with it. We've been drinking it, treating it for years. The reality is over time, that lake has become contaminated and polluted uh, because of runoff associated with the parks, with septic systems, with fertilizers, with the watersheds that dump into the lake. They are TMDLs on the, the watersheds that feed into the lake, both for Moore, for Oklahoma City, and for Norman. The lake has some issues, Thunderbird specifically, and, and if we aren't proactive and we aren't looking to the future, we could find ourselves in a very difficult position uh, in terms of having a quality water supply to provide um, continued, uh, continued uh, resource our drinking water to our customers or constituents. So, We can't control what another municipality does as far as the press release. So the, the reason that I, I felt like it was important that we get it discussed so that you all are know we are on top of it, we are watching it, because it, that would be the worst thing for you guys to get hit with somebody asking you, hey, we, we heard that another city's telling that we're going to be drinking water out of the toilet and you have no clue no that's not how it's going to work so that's why it was important that we get this out front because we haven't committed to anything period correct correct any further discussion or questions the chair to entertain a motion to approve the report motion moved second got a motion and a second all in favor indicate saying aye aye opposed abstention motion carries uh, and ladies and gentlemen, we'll move into new business public discussion on our agenda. Does anyone have anything bef uh, to, to bring before the council? Hearing or seeing none, uh, we do have an executive session. I'm not going to uh, change our order of business. The executive ch session uh, won't take but about five minutes. So would uh, Mr. Lyon, would you read that? And, uh, and then I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session. Okay, executive session F1 discussion consideration of one entering to executive session is allowed under 25 Oklahoma statute section 307 B1 discuss the employment hiring appointment promotion demotion discipline resignation of the city manager and two an open session taking action is appropriate based on the discussion in executive session. I have a motion and uh, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor indicate saying aye. aye. Opposed? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll, move, we'll uh, be going into executive session. This won't take five minutes. Uh, we'll be right back.
proceed as instructed in the executive session. And motion to proceed, to proceed uh, as discussed. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate for saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention, motion carries. Um, there are items of further information on the agenda. You can look through that as your leisure. Is there anything else that needs to come before the council? Hearing none, we're hereby adjourned, and I call to order the City of Midwest City Municipal Authority. We do have a consent agenda attached to this. Uh, these items are placed on the consent agenda, so the trustees, by unanimous consent, can approve routine items by one motion. If any one item proposed does not meet with the approval of all trustees or members of the audience which discuss one, it will be removed and heard in regular order. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. Aids. I'm sorry I didn't uh, recognize you. Um, there's the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate you're saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Go into the discussion portion of our agenda and Mr. Lyons, discussion item number one. Discussion consideration to revoke amendment number two to the construction management contract with CMS Willowbrook for the Sheridan Adela conversion model room furniture fixture and equipment in an amount not to exceed 49,275.51. Before we take action on this, Carrie, do, with the discussion we had tonight, do we need to still revoke this? Yes, okay. Is there any questions or discussion on this item? Chair, to entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention, motion carries. Item number two. Item number two, discussion consideration regarding a public presentation on architectural development in the design phase of the brand conversion and renovation of the Midwest City shared into a Delta Hotel by Marriott by Flick Mars, who are design um, architects and designers from Dallas are here. They've been working on our project. They're all on the front row. Carrie's the one doing the building. They're doing the designing. I think Karen's gonna lead the initial or James, who's going to do the, James is one of the owners, James Flick, if you want to introduce staff. I'm James Flick, partner with Flick Mars, interior design and architecture in Dallas. Standing next to me is Karen Prigmore, studio director. And, uh, go ahead. Um, Marie, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. This is Marie. Hi, I'm um, designer yeah. on the project as well. I've got a real quick question. This is being handed out to all of us. Will it be available so it can be downloaded so the public can see the exact same thing? Yes, we've sent the digital uh, the PDF, yes. We don't have it in our agenda. This? Yes. You have two ren some renderings, but we sent this out in separate cover to the council because we did not have it at the time okay. of publication. But it is available for the public to be able to see also, correct? It, it will be um, It will be on my, tomorrow morning. I just, I, one of the things that we have always talked about as a council here since at least most of us got elected is transparency. And if we're looking at this, we wanted to make sure that, that all of our residents would have access to the same thing. Of course. All right, Je this is Jesse as well. He's also a designer at Flick Mars. So I'm just going to run the slideshow, but. Um, we didn't introduce Danielle. No, no. She, she also goes by Danielle. This is, this is um, Tim, Mr. Lyons' um, nickname for, <laughs> for Marie. You can go to the first, first, first page. Page. First slide. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. 
With every hotel, we start off and we kind of find our inspiration for the space, how we can make this hotel yours, unique to you, unique to you, uh, Midwest city, and kind of representative of the culture here. Karen and I were lucky enough to come up and take a tour of the city, and we came away with um, this kind of overall concept that we've really tried to tie into our space. We were able to visit a lot of the landmarks, meet a lot of wonderful people, and we found a lot of contrast in the area. We found a contrast between um, a town really rooted in military distinction, yet everyone we met was incredibly warm and welcoming. We also found a town that has been tested by a lot of natural disaster, and yet we found people that were so resilient and so strong in the face of um, such events like that. And so for this hotel, we really tried to focus on the contrast that we saw and the contrast that we thought really made this place unique. Um, we typically move into kind of three different taglines that we try to incorporate and apply through the design. Um, one of them being deliberate flexibility, uh, a calm after the storm, and an organic precision. Um, those, you know, kind of speak to us as we develop any design. Um, and a lot of this stuff is also uh, representative of the concepts that a Delta uh, brand with Marriott would want us to apply in the conversion as well. Um, if we go to the next slide, this is kind of an overall plan. A little hard to see on the screen, but y'all have your handouts. Um, so this is representing the area, the main lobby space that we would uh, do most of the renovation to, um, in addition to the rooms, but this would be the bulk of the work. So moving in from the entry space, um, we wouldn't be doing a whole lot of work to architecturally like to the ceilings. It would be mo mostly finished changes, um, replacing uh, finished floors, a lot of furniture um, replacements. We would rework the bar and work standards from the Delta property into it. They require a market uh, space in adjacency to the bar, so that'd be more of like a grab-and-go operation, and you can see that on the right. Um, one of the main things we want to do is keep the fireplace um, that is there. There's gas lines there for the fireplace. We want to keep it, but we want to open up that space, so the lobby, walking in, you kind of have this grand, like, uh, central access straight through the space into the outdoor terrace area just to make it feel more, more welcoming and a little bit more contemporized. Um, so we would open that up with some um, more of a glass fireplace feature in the middle. You'll see some imagery a little bit later in the presentation. And it's also about increasing the revenue opportunities by utilizing the uh, existing patio, but enhancing that architecturally and with furniture, you actually uh, can maximize and realize more revenue. So this was all really important what Karen was talking about in terms of sight lines and opening the space up. All right, and that gives you the opportunity too as well to um, have events in the patio area that I don't think is quite being utilized to the extent that it could be currently. I think there's uh, quite a bit of opportunity out there that it's not being um, capitalized on. Um, the next sheet goes into uh, just detailing a little bit of the RCP selected ceiling plan and what we would do to the ceiling. Again, uh, not much change there, It'd just be a little bit of a finished change. We're not gonna um, mess with too much architecturally. If anything, it would be replacing ceiling tiles with a uh, gyp ceiling, which was part of the property enhancement protocol for Marriott um, to replace the ceiling tiles and just clean it up a little bit there. Um, if we go into the next slide, uh, we're just kind of blow up per area in this public space. Oh, question? Sorry. Yeah. No. No, you're fine. We, well, I think it's just the way we've set this presentation up so that the focus right now is on the colored areas that we're presenting. We are doing minimal uh, updates to the pool area. It was just finished out, so it would be a tile reselect and some paint um, just to clean that area up and correct some of the things that are, are a little bit more run down in that zone. Yeah. Right, right. Got it. Thank you. No, that's fine. Anybody has a question, please yeah. feel free. I have no flow, so interrupt. Um, 
Okay, so if we go to the next page, we're blowing up just right inside the vestibule entry um, into the main space where you'll see check-in is to your left. And on this sheet, we've just shown some concept imagery of, um, for instance, number one would be um, art behind the reception desk. We want to ground the reception with something that's focal back there. We've used a lot of copper um, pulling from the red earth and things of the area um, that speak to just coloration. Um, and a lot of the things you'll see throughout these concept imagery is um, we're taking the angles and some of the materiality, again, from aviation. Um, that's just kind of where some of the concept came from. Number two is representing reception desk, something more sculptural, a little more contemporized. Um, number five is what I was speaking about earlier. You see a little snippet of what the fireplace could be, just glass visual open up, um, nothing that's blocking your view or separating the lobby from the restaurant space as much. If you go to the next sheet, this is just representing some of the uh, furniture that we're proposing for the area. Again, the ideas behind Delta as a brand is flexibility. It is geared towards a business hotel, um, providing convenience, plug-ins, anything that would be more convenient for the business traveler. Um, variety of seating, um, perch seating at reception, so if you're checking in and someone's there waiting, and then again, just a nice furniture grouping in the center to, f to ground that space. Power for your devices. And right. again, like Karen said, anything that makes it more convenient and effortless for the uh, guests that are utilizing the facility is a brand statement. So the furnishings take on, again, uh, the hint of the uh, aviation imagery, the sofa you can see is representative of a wing of an aircraft. Things are very subtle, but when it all comes together, it, um, without being kitsch, basically it brings in, in that contrast of the aviation versus the soft seating for the big reception. So that's that's gonna run throughout the plan. Yeah, underlying themes not so much in your face is kinda you know what we were going for, but we obviously we wanna pay respect to the history and what's around in the area. Um, just for example, the light fixture that we're proposing for the central space in the lobby, you'll see in the upper left hand corner, um, that's reminiscent of a weather vane. Um, just kind of taking cues from that. Uh, if you go on to the next sheet, this is just some colored elevations of what, uh, elevation sections of what your lobby space could look like in the top one. On the left hand side, you see some um, reeded glass and metal screening just to help separate space a little bit so that there are cozier zones in your lobby. Uh, and then the fireplace again and over to the right on that top elevation would be um, kind of where the bar and market is. Uh, bottom elevation again is reception desk on the far left with your focal art. And then in the plan, um, previously I think what's existing right now is a buffet area and then another room that you would walk around and that's your uh, hospitality room right now for um, event rentals. We're proposing opening that up and using that as potential overflow floor restaurant seating at breakfast time. I know there's large events at the Reed Center that utilize that space so it could double as restaurant seating and then we also have a larger barn doors that section that space off into two other flexible areas so if you did still have an event or a meeting that you wanted to rent these spaces out for you could just adding additional flexibility to spaces that you have by the inclusion of opening them up and adding that uh, barn doors that can close them off yeah. yes
I think we will definitely need to do that and definitely incorporate it. I mean, something else we've discussed too is the, there's quite an opportunity down the hallway that's connecting the front entrance to the Reef Center and doing some sort of nod to the history and artwork down that pathway and creating like a story or a timeline I think would be very cool. Um, and then we've also talked about found objects or any of that nature, highlighting at the bar, you know, doing it around. And I know you did say something about um, local events and. It makes me think, and correct me if I'm wrong, more of a self-serve kind of concierge okay. station. Exactly, like right on the same path that you just went. I mean, I'm very interested in that and keeping that open. Mm -hmm. So there's some support of having creative space to create times that are like that. Mm -hmm. you know, so that may be one of those components right. that are out there. Otherwise, we also have um, the Bay City Museum that has some of those things, but there's for if there's a way to do it where shopping is One of the things we have now is out in the hallway as you enter is the brochures, all the brochures. So if we so could help you that. Yeah, we can take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah, and then. Yeah, we can definitely think about that and take that into consideration. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. And it's a good timing because yeah. the whole art and accessory program is a whole separate phase that we're going to do. So th thank you for that. I think that's, I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to make sure that you mentioned deltas around the country, but each delta really wants to speak about where it is. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way to do it. Thank you. Good job, everybody. So this slide or sheet is showing just uh, the initial perspective rendering, kind of encapsulating all of those previous sheets that you've seen, giving you an overall view of what your um, entry experience would be walking through the doors. And um, this is kind of pivoted off to the right towards the elevators and looking back at reception. And you can see how, um, I mean, the, the overall feel has changed considerably. I mean, it is, um, I think, a good deal of finished revision and FF&E revision that's creating an entirely different space and feel for you guys um, taking this into a delta. And again, you can see that there is quite a bit of an open sight line coming in from the entry space going out through to the, the terrace area. Um, if you go to the next sheet, this is just blowing up a little bit into the um, bar area, the bar uh, market. So it's a little bit past reception, past the fireplace. Um, reworking the seating in this area, incorporating a bit of lounge seating around the fireplace, just as perchable areas for coffee in the morning, uh, making that a welcoming seating zone. Um, and then uh, again, communal tables, you'll see with number two, concepts for communal table. Um, and then again, power and convenience hookups at that location. Um, Delta and Marriott in general wants power and convenience hookups everywhere, including at the bar die. So every everything will be very um, up to date and convenient um, for the business traveler, um, anybody coming to the Reef Center. Including a variety of seating uh, to accommodate different size groups, different types of groups, from single tra business travelers to two people, four people, six, et cetera. There, a lot of thought has been uh, put into accommodating as many different types of groups as we can, and then the ease of which tables can be joined together, et cetera. This is a dramatic change from the way it is now. It's kind of an old school restaurant and bar, and this is very, very much more communal in nature, so. And there is also a requirement to, um, that we need to consider moving forward is kind of um, branding the F&B concept a little bit and tying uh, a story or the underlying storyline of the design through to a signature drink or an appetizer, or the naming of, you know, 
uh, menu items. Um, so the design concept will flow through the entire brand, essentially, to be a kind of um, a very big change. And the next page is just more of expanded FF&E selections for that area as well. You can see, again, um, options, as James was saying, in seating, um, counter height, bar height, communal tables, lounge sofa experiences, different levels of lighting, things that are a little bit more um, on people level for uh, mood. A little bit more ff &E on the next page, dining related seating. Um, again, this zone in here is somewhat flexible in seating selection, but not necessarily s flexible in rearrangement. Uh, the rearranging would be held or reserved more for the flex rooms that are off to the side. Well, let me, let me address that. Actually, uh, what an, an elderly population really needs, they need sturdy furniture with arms uh, that they don't sink down <laughs> into. So that has been, yeah, that's what, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, no. Yeah. Exactly. No, that, that no, we're fully aware sense. of that. And so you'll see there's different types of seating, but we definitely accommodated some that's not so cushy that you're sinking in, that's not so low that it's hard to get up out yeah, of. Right, right. right. Yeah, and again, seat height is a big uh, big kicker too. Mm -hmm. Gotta make sure the seat heights aren't anything like super contemporary and low, because I, I get what you're saying for sure. A lot of the ff &E as we move forward would be a combination of running line items that purchase kind of off the shelf. That's so great, of course. And then uh, custom furniture, and I don't want anybody to to freak out when we say custom, a lot of times in our world, custom furniture ends up being less expensive than the running line items. And then that gives us the opportunity to address some of those concerns and design it to fit the necessity. Right, yeah, we may not be in the dog show business after this hotel opens is a short answer. I'll tell you why after the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, we we're pet friendly now. It's a Starwood requirement, but under Marriott it's not. So yeah. but for a new hotel. Okay. Uh, the next sheet shows a bar and market elevation. Uh, this is a quick color study of what your bar could look like. Uh, we were looking at, I mean, again, I, I'm sure you're all, all familiar with the property. There's a lot of heavy wood paneling, which is, is beautiful, uh, some of which we're trying, to, we're trying to maintain as much as we can of the paneling, but we would go in and paint it, contemporize it. Um, some of the walls that we're removing don't allow us to keep a lot of what is there, um, but we're gonna try and maintain what we can. Um, and then in the bar, we have kind of a quilted leather look at the bar die, wash that with light set a nice mood and then liquor displays at the back bar shelves would be uplit um, two TVs at the back bar and then we have a, a few other TVs placed around throughout the restaurant and flex spaces for guest viewing as well um, main bar is towards the left of the elevation market you can see more towards the right um, full height reach-ins again I think this is a good opportunity to do more of an expanded grab-and-go uh, purchase items for coffee, a coffee program, and sandwiches and salads, and anything that someone can run over quickly from the Reed Center and purchase. Um, and then. Is the grab and go is a brand standard right. requirement. <laughs> um, here you'll see a, a rendered elevation of the back space, the restaurant space looking towards the bar, just to give you a better feel of what this um, is gonna look like in reality. The next sheet kind of goes into the flex, the two flex spaces that I was talking about earlier. 
um, one of which, the first one that you would come to from the restaurant space would be the breakfast buffet. Uh, so we have proposed an island set up here where we'd have um, the induction tops or warming tops worked into the counter so that it would be a cleaner setup and easier um, takeaway when buffet was broken down, induction or cooling tops in the back counter as well. This kind of gives you a nice little nook to set up the buffet in the back there, but it's still accessible and creates a good flow for uh, breakfast pickup in the event of that setup. Um, all of these dining tables and chairs in this back area, again, are flexible, proposing um, squares that can be ganged together for meeting spaces, chairs that are stackable so that if you need to move them out of the way, you can easily stack them and move them out of the way. This next sheet is just showing an elevation of that back wall buffet counter um, and just a small setup counter for the other flex space. Uh, TV in the buffet is something we're proposing so someone could sit at the counter and watch the news in the morning if they would like. Um, again, keeping a wet bar or a sink in that back area because there is currently plumbing so we would just be reusing that and still maintaining um, that offering. And then uh, moving into the fitness center, um, this was one of the areas grayed out in the original, but here is a blown up um, proposed version of this fitness layout. The fitness center is currently smaller in square footage footprint. Uh, part of the brand standard is to expand that uh, to meet um, a square footage requirement. We have, I think, agreed within the PIP to go as much as we can. This is kind of the agreement that we've landed on square footage wise. It's almost uh, time and a half the size that it is. Uh, we're using some of the equipment that's there, purchasing new equip equipment to infill um, wall finish revisions and floor finish revisions in the fitness area. Just to we'll be removing it. the men's restroom and that'll expand into the fitness center. And if you think about where when they originally built the hotel, there was a bank of pay phones outside the fitness center, that'll all be gone and squared up and brought into space along with one of the big interior closets. We'll still be under the brand standard, but it was an agreement we have with Marriott. Not by much, it's a, it's a good size fitness space at this point. It's nice, with, and then maintaining a, a unisex restroom for fitness and pool access because the pool door is also just plan north of the fitness center. Uh, if you go to the next sheet, this is just showing concept for graphic in the fitness center. One of the brand requirements is that we do um, some sort of fitness related uh, vinyl wall covering application that is something that is focal in the fitness center. So the development of this artwork is um, still happening, but there will be one large art piece that we would kind of like to do in the, a more sketchy concept. And then to the right, you just see we'll have, a, we're proposing a nicer built in millwork station for the water bottle fillers, the chilled towels, the fruit bowl, um, just taking the fitness center a notch up from where it is. Public restrooms will get a facelift as well. Um, currently looking at what we can maintain from what's there fixture wise uh, and just do a finish. Yeah, facelift finish. essentially, yeah. yeah facelift. And we would do uh, replace, proposing replacing the faucet tree and the sconces um, tile at wet wall surrounds and just updating it a little bit in there and continuing any lobby tile flooring changes um, continuous through that back hallway and into the um, restroom area as well. And then the next page, which is it's close to the last, so yes, the last area we have for the public space would be the terrace area, and this is just an enlarged plan. And um, what we're proposing is creating a central access um, exit from the restaurant to the terrace space outside. Um, right now, the door is kind of off to the side towards the bar area, so that would be um, a major, uh, main revision in that wall. But that keeps our central access there. Doing a trellised covered seating right outside of the restaurant, um, introducing reconfiguring really there's already a water feature currently out there so we would just be contemporizing that something low and linear um, lit um, potential for water features within that or fire features within that water as well just something to draw people out there um, and then again more flexible seating outside tre under trellises to either side of that water feature 
the next sheet is just representing uh, the directional change of the plank of what we would want to do for a contemporized trellis um, metal and, and uh, wood structure for those guys. Part of the structure that is directly outside of the restaurant would be covered because we were proposing doing TVs out there as well. We just want to make the space as inviting as possible, um, pulling people out there, and that would give us the opportunity to do a larger fan or misters or lighting in that to kind of create an outdoor living space. Really enhances um, the uh, bar sales as well as Karen mentioned earlier, uh, you can uh, sell this to groups, things like that. So again, a lot of, a lot of additional revenue yeah. opportunities. Uh, and the next sheet's proposed FF&E concepts for the outdoor area. Um, nothing too heavy, movable, just to allow for the flexibility. Um, following sheet is the pantry. This is a, a brand standard requirement. It's the VIP, Marriott VIP pantry. Um, so this would require card access for the guests. Um, this will be on the fifth floor where we have the, what do we call it now, MPG. SPG, uh, I SPG, mean, SPG, yeah, for, for club uh, lounge. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so it's a club lounge essentially. The concept is uh, they invite the guests in. Um, there is a TV, but it's mainly for quick pickup. Go in, pick up your breakfast, a snack, and leave. It's there's no seating in the space, so it's really set up as an oversized kitchen essentially. Um, refrigeration, water filtration for bottle fillers, um, espresso machines. Um, we have two islands for additional setup if there's events that the, uh, the hotel chooses to have or uh, wants to lay out a spread, but um, this is just general concept for that space as well. And we would be dooring that off because of the card access requirement. The next sheet shows elevations for this area. Again, coloration, bringing in the copper. Um, we're just trying not to overdo the copper in reference to the red earth of the area, but um, obviously want to use it in key key areas around the property. We don't want very much closed cabinetry. We would just do a minimal amount of exposed shelving in that area for some decorative display. But otherwise, it's just brand standard requirements in that space. And then finally, if anybody has any questions, feel free to interrupt me. I feel like I'm rambling on. Um, it's the guest room design. Um, what we did for the guest rooms, and this was for a request, a client request to do something that was more brand standard. So brand does have their standard design packages, their standard specs for these furnishings um, and finishes. So we took you know, the standard design for the vanity and we're doing that. We took the headboard, we took the, the luggage rack and the desk piece and uh, all of these pieces and used standard pieces but changed fabrics on them so there's not anything that's too far out in left field for the guest rooms um, that we're also, throwing at uh, you there. making this more about Midwest City by use of the artwork uh, if we want to do a large uh, mural on the, uh, printed on wall covering behind the headboard so really the whole wall becomes art in that case. Right and then Again, this is based on what we were proposing as the model room renovation um, as a test for what would be applied throughout the property. So you're, what you're seeing here is what is currently the hospitality suites. Um, again, the bay that's showing the king bed in the living space is what's currently a hospitality suite. We are proposing um, adding a connector to a double queen to the right plan right side of that so that these could operate again as larger hospitality suites. So in that zone that's on level one down by fitness and pool, you would be, um, there's three, there's three of these, right? So we'd be two of these, yeah. So we would essentially losing two keys in this area and creating these nicer suites with connectors. Um, and this is what we were proposing because this would give you a taste of mocking up every portion of. Currently we have requests for suites and we n and this will create, that'll meet the request, especially for the large groups. The people want to have those suites to entertain in, so this will, this will be very nice for the client. Also these uh, exist right on that patio area that we were discussing previously. And because of that, uh, right now they're completely open. The doors to these rooms are open to that more public patio area. So we're uh, proposing that uh, Jesse can point to adding a screen, uh, sort of a 
gate or the fence type of element there to provide some privacy for the employees on the, on the outdoor patio. So the next sheet shows an elevation study of the double headboard wall, and this is what James was referencing previously. Um, doing a custom graphic on a vinyl wall covering that is creating your art, and this is something that we've taken inspiration from just the sky and planes and striations and um, wind movement that occurs in aviation. I always forget the term. Vortex, something vortex, uh, sorry. Uh, Wingtip wing wing vortex. Vortices. Yeah. vortices. Mm -hmm. I am the uh, resident aviation geek. And yeah. <laughs> Not me. Um, but again, that's our main punch. Everything else is uh, pretty brand standard. Vinyl headboards on um, wood, wood case good headboard walls, um, doing an accent wall covering in the bathrooms, updating the vanities to brand standard vanity, a wood base and a solid surface top. And we would have an electric mirror so that it's the really nice uh, facelit um, mirrors for, I mean, women seem to appreciate these a whole lot. And I'd like to point out these are queen beds. Currently we have all full size beds in the double rooms and the rooms are wide enough that we can easily fit the queen size beds, which will make people a lot happier that a lot sure. more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, and we've test fit all of the different bays and different room types throughout the property to make sure that that's feasible doing a double queen in every, in every place that is currently a double double. And the next sheet shows an elevation of the standard TV wall. Uh, we have a bit of a, a challenge with the closets and the different room type conditions in an existing property. And so what we tried to do is mm, create a design that is as flexible as possible so we don't have as many different conditions of closets. We don't have seven types of closets that have to be made. There's consistency and efficiency in that um, and size the luggage bench and the desk um, appropriately as well for that. Um, the safe we would be reusing from the property and then the fridge as well. So we've sized this to accommodate. Um, safe would be behind a concealed millwork door right underneath where you see the iron. Um, concept of the hanging space is a more open closet, but the ironing board is concealed behind a millwork door. It's kind of a hybrid between a standard closet and a more contemporized retail closet. The next sheet is just a quick study of the king headboard. So you can see how that applies with the elevation there. Um, again, same concept for wall covering. We wouldn't change up the graphic at all throughout the property. And next sheet, suite living room FF&E. Um, what is proposed there? Again, key elements would be a pull-out sofa in these two rooms so that there would be a sleeping opportunity in that living space as well, keeping the um, cocktail tables in front of that light and movable so that that is an easy transition in there. And then the final page is proposed aesthetic for the terrace seating outside of these suites. We are ADA compliant. We'll have ADA rooms. There'll be rooms that are currently ADA. We'll continue to be ADA. We'll meet right. all the federal standards. There are there and there's Correct. not currently that space there when we are creating probably legally that good is it very hard to seal in there until you guys have enough consistent distance. So the conversion right now we're doing work on the first floor for these suites. Those are gonna be the model rooms. And once the model rooms are completed, and that's why Carrie DeHart is here with CMS Willowbrook, who'll be con completing all the construction and doing the bidding of the project under his construction management contract. So that, that'll have to be completed. And then Marriott will have to come out and view and check off. They've, they've approved this, I guess you call it 60%. I think it's more than 60% at this point. I don't, what percent would you call this? This Karen? submission is 60% design development. Um, we have obviously continue to work, so it's a little beyond this now, um, just applying this. So Marriott has to approve it, and they've done that, and they've made changes. I mean, you don't see them, but we, we've we had to go through that process. Carrie, you wanna give us some idea on construction? Carrie DeHart, who owns CMS Willowbrook? Well, uh, yes, we have already started on the model rooms as far as demolition and getting those ready for the changes in those. 
We're also taking bids on the pool area because we know what's going on there. As far as the construction, uh, we have life safety things that we can be doing this spring and other things uh, until we can bid the rest of the project. And as far as the schedule right now, unless it changes, we're going to uh, you know, keep the hotel completely open as far as the, the, uh, to, to the public. We'll have to section off a, a lot of different areas, a lot of times for the uh, public areas. So we uh, still try to give the, uh, your clients, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a good feeling and, and uh, a, a good approach. And then we'll, we'll start on the fifth floor and we'll get a floor at a time and work our way down. And so that's how it'll be. Sure. Yeah, Carrie's go, go ahead, Carrie will address that. <coughs> yes, that uh, the existing uh, dehumidifier uh, um, is going to be replaced, and that system brought up to standards. Okay. Any other questions? These are all good. We, as uh, we, when we complete the model rooms, we'll have a tour. I'll, we'll set up a time that everyone can come by and see it that on the council would like to. I'm going to assume that all the furniture that you've depicted in here is uh, readily available on market, or does it have to be made? Or? I would say it's a good portion of it is on the market, so off the shelf. Um, there will be some items that are custom. A lot of the case goods in the rooms are custom, and that's sure. just uh, pretty much the way it is. Um, but there's brand-approved vendors for that that are recommendations for that um, that, I mean, they're quick. Okay. Right in our bid process, we'll ask for delivery dates and price and everything else to it so we can make good decisions on what to uh, select as the uh, best bid for. And hopefully soon we'll bring you back a budget, which we have not quite got there yet because of the FF and E. Yeah, and then, sorry, just real quick to clarify, anything that is custom, I mean, we've considered lead times for these items for production when we were talking about initial scheduling, so nothing is going to be way out of the ordinary. Okay. It'll all be use tax, so it'll, well, there won't be any tax because we're tax exempt. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be bought, the city will buy everything on behalf of the authority. Yeah. Well, that was the end of the new housing, and you can pay all the use tax. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Are there any further questions of uh, these fine folks? Thank you so much. That uh, it looks great. I like this. Thank you. Very contemporary. Uh, Thank you. With that being said, the chair to entertain a motion, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, move into the new business public discussion of our agenda. Does any have anyone have anything to bring for the authority? Hearing none, we're hereby adjourned, and I call to order the Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority. We have two discussion items on this agenda. Mr. Lyons. Discussion item one, discussion consideration approving the minutes of the regular December 10th, 2019 meeting as submitted. Well, Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, Mayor. Item number two, there's no action needed. Item number two, no action needed. Ladies and gentlemen, we move into the new business public discussion. Does anybody have anything to bring before the hospital authority? Hearing none, we are hereby adjourned. Good night.